Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm going to try a new feature today. I like doing things on the fly. I'm going to go on the fly. Every team, well, at least half the league on this one, part one, and then the other half of the league on my next one, on my impression of the first couple games for each team. Simple as that. If you want to be part of this more often, hit the subscribe button. You can go see the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. There will be frolic, you know. There will be frolic. Uh, yes, we do that five days a week during the week from 3 to 5 Eastern. I also do live shows too. I did a uh, play-by-play with uh, Slapshot Sweethearts last night. Go check them out. That was cool. I did the third period of the Boston Philly game. I also do it with Peyton on the radio. And there is so much brolic. You're, it's going to blow your mind. There should It should be illegal, but it's not yet. So watch it. Uh, this is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, as you can see right here. If you like the four major sports and teams within those four major sports, you'll love the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, let's start off with the Anaheim Ducks, everybody's favorite team in the land. Uh, oh, this is Chicago. That's right. Sorry. This is, this is Anaheim. Anaheim Ducks. Okay, my impression is... It's just size. They have the size, but they don't play the size. They have a couple guys like Comtois and Getzlaff. But overall, they're actually a fairly small team, and they don't play big. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they're a very young team. But my impression is I'm liking the direction they're going still. This year, they're really showing where there seems to be a positive direction. Now, when they played Calgary... Two days ago, uh, or two games ago, they got beat up all over the ice. But they managed to find a way to win. They've got some slick shooters there. I love Trevor Zegras. Um, it was nice to see Sam Steele by it get back into the lineup again. Can you help me out? What's going on? Sam Steele looks like a third or fourth liner. Eh? It doesn't look like he's ever going to make it up on the top line. I'll tell you one guy that I was talking about before the season started, and I'm still going to talk about him now. Oh, he's got four assists too. Isaac Lundestrom. I love that guy. I really, really think that guy's going to be an awesome two-way center. And uh, he's growing into it really well. And he's even got, like I said, he's got four assists. So I don't. I still don't think they're going to make the playoffs at all. And I probably still lean to the idea of trading guys like Lindholm, Manson, and I hate to say it, but John Gibson. Um, but if they can put up, I, I think basically this is what management has done here. They've told these kids that if you want these veterans to stay here and for this team to grow, like if we think this team is going to go really fast, grow really fast and become a contender quickly, Work your butt off, listen to those veterans, and we'll keep them here, and we'll be okay. I think that's what they're doing. The question is, are they going to be able to do that? I'm more positive after three games. It's what, well, How many games did they play? Three, four games? Than I was before the season started. So, um, But it is only four games. That can slip. They're young. The physical grind uh, could could really harm these guys. Uh, like the smaller players, that's what happens in the physical grind of the game. It takes a while to get used to the punishment in the NHL, right? It, it's not the same as junior. It is tough out there. And for players to be able to keep going at it uh, at, you know, 2021, like Benoit Olivier Garreau. By the way, I wanted to look that up. He was in junior last year, was he not? Uh, AHL. Okay, 29 points in 42 games. Not too shabby. He looks really quick. Uh, he looks like he's definitely going to be a gamer, which he didn't put absolutely enormous numbers up in junior for a QMHL, QMJHL guy till his final year where he had 41 
Those aren't usually numbers that spell NHL player all that much, but his two-way play looks fantastic and his work ethic is off the charts. So he looks like he's probably going to have a pretty good chance to make it. Um, John Gibson, man, I, if he can keep his head, as you can tell, he gets frustrated out there. This guy hates freaking losing. And if they're not competitive this year, I just have a feeling he's going to whisper up to management and say, okay, I've had enough. I've had enough already. Uh, when, when's he? Oh, he's, yeah, he's paid till 2027. I just have that feeling, man. He, I, he can't be that frustrated for that long. These, this team has got to start winning and winning now. Okay, Mason McTavish, of course. we got to talk about Mason McTavish. Um, it's too bad he got injured, man. He was looking absolutely fantastic. They lower body injury and they don't know how long. Uh, tell me if you've heard fans what how long he's going to be out there. Uh, be out. Um, they got Max Jones injured again because he was just in the lineup. Well, that hurts. See, there's some big bodies that they really need out there. Uh, not able to play. Anyways. I hope he's fine soon because he was fun to watch in Anaheim. That was, I don't know if he would have got his nine games. I think they would have kept him up because he's got the size to play in the league. That he, Mason McTavish is a really good example of a guy that they have to make some sort of exceptional rule for. Where you can, once one player a year or something like that, you don't have to send him to junior you can bring him, put him to the AHL because he would just absolutely destroy junior. And it, he's not going to get any better down there, I don't think. So I think they'd end up keeping him up. But um, anyways, this team, I'd say, is, you know, I, on a positive, I think they're two and two. Uh, I think they're, they, yeah, they're two and two. But forget about record. I just really like the way this team is playing compared to last year so far. So tell me what you guys think, Anaheim fans. Uh, Arizona Coyote. Okay, we all know this team is going to suck. Uh, but there's some guys putting up some pretty good fight out there. And uh, they, you're probably going to have pretty good value at the trade deadline. Ryan Dezingle has looked like he is not complaining at all. He's given her every shift. He's always been like that. I'm sure you're going to be able to pull a draft pick out of him. Um, Phil Kessel, God, <laughs> I mean, he's in a tough spot. And I've heard people say he should retire and all that. I don't know if people are watching Arizona games, but Phil plays well out there. I, I, I don't see a guy who's not trying. I see a guy who's giving his best every game. And uh, tell me if you think otherwise, but... Um, I think he takes too much of a too much flack, Phil. Uh, yeah, the whole hot dog thing. And yeah, he's not the most well conditioned guy in the world. But you know what? He plays better than a lot of well conditioned guys. So Louis Erickson in the second line. I mean, have you guys been watching this guy? Can't get a softer player out there that there is. Six million dollars a year. Crazy. Good thing for Arizona. Winning isn't the number one thing for them. But um, I'd say Clayton Keller. I feel for Clayton Keller. He has been playing his butt off all uh, out there. And uh, I don't, you know, you can't trade him. It's difficult. Uh, he doesn't seem to be complaining. He's getting paid well. He's going to wait it out. And by the time this team is relevant, he's going to be getting up there in age, but I feel for him too a little bit. And I want to give big props to Andrew Ladd, who came back for some crushing injuries, and he's playing like a boss as much as he possibly can in that body. He's given her. He's such a good story. And I think it's great for the young players to be able to see a guy who just never gives up because that's really what we need in the NHL, right? What we need to be a successful team is the ability to never give up. And uh, if they're going to, when Arizona is going to be relevant again, Andrew Ladd's going to rub off on some of these guys that are out there, like Connor Timmons and Victor Schuderstrom, who also I wanted to just, this is all positive for each team, even though I, uh, Soderstrom, Schuderstrom 
has played very, very well in the time, in the minutes I've seen him play for a 20 year old. You got a good one there. And then, of course, Kirill Vemelka. What a great story that is. I, I think that's how you say it. Sorry if, if I messed that up. Uh, I know you're watching, Carol. I know you're watching. But So if I messed it up, I apologize. Right from here. Right from here. Um, he had one good game in Buffalo. We'll see. He hasn't really put up a lot of great numbers anywhere. It's just a good story. I hope he does well. And Carter Hutton. It's just being Carter Hutton. He's a terrible goaltender. If you want to get a first overall pick, having Carter Hutton on your goaltender goaltending uh, roster is uh, a good way to do it, for sure. So let's look at a couple of their junior players. Barrett Hutton, this is what's the most important thing is for them. Uh, he, he's going, gone down to the AHL. He hasn't got a point yet. Man, oh, man, oh, man. The time is running out on this kid. Wasn't he a 2015 draft, too? Is that? Oh, 2018. Okay. It wasn't the deepest draft in there. But I know he was picked higher than people thought. I'm not going to go in and find out who they could have picked instead of him, but I'm sure you all know. And it's really getting scary, buddy. I hope he can make it because they need him big time. Uh, not much here. There's not much to come up, and that's the problem. Uh, Ryan McGregor's putting up good points in college, I, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, sorry, he's in the AHL. He's got, no, wrong guy. Not much going on there. Uh, we're really hoping for guys like Dylan Gunther. Who's he loaned to? They loaned him somewhere? Oh, he's playing in the Oil Kings. Three points in six games. I'm sure he'll get more than that. I'm sure he'll light it up there it's only six games so not much to uh there's, there's just not much i'm trying to find the positive here trying to find the positive oh there we go don't son he's got nine points in six games in arizona state right now that's that's good news man that's good points for the college right on and they drafted him 37th oh he's a 2021 what about Ilya fedotov also 2021 Oh, MHL. Tried him in the KHL for 14 games. He's down in the MHL. Okay, he's building. But anyways, those are the positives that I saw. Uh, they're playing hard. It's just uh, Shane Goss despair. Okay, the negatives now. The Shane Goss despair is still an absolute disaster defensively. I know he has four assists, but uh, wait, it was the Oilers game, I think. And it was there was a two... Basically a two, one on two, and he goes down on one knee and waves his stick around. He almost looked like back in the day they used to have NHL hockey when they first came out in video games, and your defender would just kind of slide off this way and you wonder where he went. He looked just like that. Anyways, let's get to the next team. Uh, Boston Bruins. Okay, I just watched this. Uh, like I did a... Uh, Sweet, Slapshot Sweethearts, if you're a Boston Bruins fan, they do live uh, live play. Not really play-by-play, play, but live shows during the game. I was on there for the third period last night and uh, watching Boston get their butt kicked by Philadelphia, but they didn't they, – they all play Philadelphia. Swayman didn't have his best game, I guess, but really the defense, like last year, that's the scary part. Just kept on coughing up the puck, coughing up the puck, coughing up the puck. It was crazy. Uh, it's just that that was supposed to be solved by getting Derek Forbert and, uh, you know, help solve the problem. Mike Riley being back. Uh, but it wasn't. It was back to that. It was only one game. We'll see what happens. But it didn't look good at all. And then Nick Felino gets hurt. That is not good, man. This is a team that needs their depth as much as possible. Nick Foligno was hurt last year at the end in Toronto. Please tell me he's not going to just be injury after injury for you Boston fans. Again, for Nick Foligno. Uh, Jake DeBrusque has looked like eh, okay. He looks like a third liner, maybe even a fourth liner right now. And he's 25 years old. He was supposed to progress a lot more than this. I think they really need to trade him away. 
and give this maybe it'll shake him up or something like that but he looks like a big lug he's not moving very well he doesn't move with a lot of uh guile there you go there's a word for you guile uh taylor hall scored a beauty and that's how taylor hall plays so if he plays like that this year things are looking good but um so far this year, like it said, it's only been two games, but it's that defense again. Tell me if you disagree, but I don't think you will. Coughing up pucks, coughing up pucks. Everything else looks okay, I suppose. Charlie Coyle's not really like I didn't think he would, but it's only been two games, but he hasn't looked like a second-line center yet to me. I think Eric Halla looks more like a second-line center than a first. Brad Marchand has looked sublime as usual. Uh, Patrice Bergeron, I hardly even noticed him against Philadelphia. So that's a little bit concerning. Um, and there's not much to come up. Studnica, yeah, I thought this was going to be the year. I thought this was going to be the year. They had a center spot for him, and he doesn't make the lineup. Things are getting a little iffy with the prospects here in Boston. Euro Vekalainen, it's time for him to step up. And he's not making it on the roster. Um, it's getting a little iffy. There's not much on here where I look at it and go, oh, this is for sure. Maybe Beecher. Beecher's put up some really good numbers. He'll probably, big boy. How, what's he doing? In, he's in college right now, right? There we go. Eight points in 16 games. I wanted a little more for that uh, offense-wise. Oh, that was 2020-21. What's he doing now? Isn't he play? Isn't he in college right now? Somebody tell me what's going on with Beecher. All right, next, uh, Buffalo. The uh, Buffalo Sabers have actually looked really good. And it's been playing a physical brand of hockey. They have been just playing very physical. Not the biggest team in the world, but they've been putting it together. They've been putting it together in a physical way. Uh, the, I, have, I have watched probably about three periods, maybe four periods of their three games off and on. I, I, I watch like crazy amounts of divorce-worthy amounts of hockey. And Dylan Cousins has looked fantastic for a guy who is only 20 years old. But the big story is Jeff Skinner. Jeff Skinner, I saw him diving in front of pucks, man. Uh, playing with heart. So I'm starting to think that Jeff Skinner is a guy that's uh, very, he gets very uh, affected by the energy of teams. I think that's what it is. He's not a guy that creates the energy for the team. He's a guy that responds to the energy of the team. And uh, changing uh, Granado coming in, changing that whole energy. I love him. I said before the season started, I think Buffalo is going to surprise this year. We've seen this before with Buffalo. I know it's early. But I love the energy of this team so far. So we'll see if that sticks. Uh, Rasmus Asplund has looked fantastic and has been getting a lot of minutes too. 16 minutes a night. Tage Thompson up the middle lo looks good. If they just get some injuries back, Casey Middlestad especially, uh, and Henri uh, Yokiharu, I think this team just might, like I said, I thought that they could surprise Darlene has looked fantastic. Will Butcher has even looked good, and he looked horrible in New Jersey. Uh, Robert Hag has played his – that's what Robert Hag is. Robert Hag is a 5'6". You'll always love him. Gives every ounce he's got, every game. You know, he's always going to be that guy. And he has been doing it for Boston – or Buffalo, helping them change the energy – for this team. I still doubt very much that they're going to make the playoffs, but let's look cuz this is a big thing. For uh this is a big thing for Buffalo is what these young players are doing right now. Uh Jack Quinn their first uh what a couple of years ago was it 2020 is in the AHL this year. 
Oh, it's only one game, but he scored a goal in his one game. He's that's that's what uh, Jack Quinn's going to be. That big shot, right? So, where uh, every goal is like uh, put can put a smile on your face. What about Paterka? He's in the minors too. Again, probably only one game, right? Yeah, it's only one game, so you're not getting much out of that. Uh, probably more of the these guys. Isaac is, is this is who they just picked up last year. Where are they playing him? Oh, he's playing in the Swedish Elite League already. Four points in 11 games. That's a good sign. Sweet. Good. Uh, Victor Podolov. BHL, KHL. Okay. They still got a lot of work to do to get some. Owen, hey, Owen Powers in college. What's he doing? Wow, six points in four games. It's only four games, but that's beautiful. That is beautiful. You get a point a game as a defenseman in college, and you are crushing it. That's a fantastic team he's on, too. That was Michigan, right? Isn't that Michigan? Yeah, University of Michigan. That team is stacked. Johnson, Ryan Johnson is on his team. I already looked it up. He's at a point a game. So... Lots to look forward to in Buffalo. You guys have to have a little bit of a sigh of relief there. That it, it, you at least see a team that has the right energy. All right, next, Calgary Flames. And I got to say, I, um, the only game that I really got to see a lot of was the one in Anaheim. And they played a very physical brand of hockey against Anaheim. And that's what Sutter's going to do. He wants aggressive hockey and heavy compete. Who? What coach doesn't? That's what all coaches want. The question really is, Will the do you have a coach that will have them respond? I know in L.A. he did. L.A., he had those guys, he had those guys playing like, their, like uh, their lives meant were dependent on it in L.A. And that's what he's going to try to do in Calgary, and we'll see what he does. He's got very natural guys like Andrew Ma Man, Gio Panny. I mean, you don't even have to tell that dude. He just plays that all the time. Love him. That's why I think a big reason Blake Coleman always plays like that. So bring him in. He pays that kind of money. I, I'm still skeptical about this team. Uh, and I'm not sure what they're going to do come trade deadline. But we noticed something here. Sean Monaghan on the fourth line now. After that game in Anaheim, I don't blame him. He is, I don't know if he's still hurt or what his problem is, but he just doesn't have it at all. He's playing way too perimeter. He's passing when he should be shooting. It's just his confidence is gone. I, I don't know what it is. He played him 16 minutes, gave him two games, and now he's on the fourth line. And I don't blame him. And they're going to try Dylan Dubé up there in the middle. Well, Dylan Dubé is a courageous little dude, man. 5'11", I think, is uh, being generous, but uh, he's a courageous dude. Uh, you got two courageous guys there, Mangiapani, Dubé, and then they're going to try Brett Ritchie. I wanted to mention that, though. He looks terrible. Terrible. I understand putting Brett Ritchie on that line to, to be able to, you know, smack some heads around when they're taking advantage of him, but they got to find somebody better as far as I'm concerned. And Luchic down to the fourth, too. That's what he is. He's a fourth liner. The defense, um, what I saw, I, Eric Branson had one of the best games I've ever seen him play against Anaheim. It was really good. Do I think he's going to keep on doing that? Probably not. But he did have a really good game against Anaheim. And uh, finally, we've seen Oliver Shillington up in the top four. Because... They need his skating, man. I always, I don't know why they were taking so long to do this. And thank God. Oh, wait, where is he? Oh, that's because Zadaroff is hurt. Oh, he's a scratch. Oh, my gosh. Zadaroff is a scratch. He deserves it. The two games I saw him, he didn't do nothing. But on to, to give him a... Uh, a little bit of a, you know, 
confidence, I guess, or whatever you want to say, he was playing with Tana. Then that was just a bad combination. I don't know why you're playing. This is much better. I'll take Shirelington and Tana. Bring Zadaroff up and what's he play? Left or right? Playing with Juso Valamaki or something like that. A guy that can move the puck a little bit. It's not really his fault, to tell you the honest truth. Um, not much in the minors, so this team has got to go. I still say a rebuild is the best way to go with them. Still do. Carolina Hurricanes and uh, Svechnikov has been absolutely on fire, which I just happened to predict, which a lot of people happen to predict because he is a beast. I see him having at least one 50-goal season. This team is going to be insane this year, I believe. Yes, uh, they've been bringing in Kokaniemi. We'll have to talk about Kokaniemi for sure. They've been bringing him in slowly and uh, yeah, playing him 11 minutes a night. He hasn't looked bad. His two-way game has been fantastic, and that's really what's going to keep him in the NHL no matter what. He does have a solid two-way game. But uh, Aho, Teravainen, I, I love those lines. Spechnikov, Trocek, Nietzsche, just the top – all of it. Well, great deep offense. Play beautifully for the coach. Uh, they have some size. They have speed. It's a nice mix. Uh, defense, Anthony D'Angelo, from what I'm hearing, has been absolutely fantastic. And uh, I thought it was the best signing of the summer. And overall, Ethan Bear also has been very, very good. Oilers, who I would, uh, I don't even, we'll get into that when we talk about Edmonton, but. I don't know what the heck they were doing there. I hear from my buddy Lauren, who's on my live stream, Seth Jarvis is going to play tonight, but they don't have him in yet. Overall, just a fantastic lineup with tons of depth. Jack Drury is there. Stefan Neeson can play if you need him. Josh Lebel has lots of experience. Uh, maybe a defense is a little bit not so much. They could use some more depth on D. Who do they have? Uh, just Brandon Smith is there. But they're on, on roster D is so good that it may not really matter. And prospects, you got Gundler, uh, Poistula, um, Scott Morrow, and Alexander Nikishin are coming up. Anthony, Hon Anthony Honka looks like he could make it. But overall, just love that team going as projection. For Carolina. Uh, Chicago, wow, having a terrible time. And in the back of my mind, and I honestly never said it, I was a little concerned about the flurry thing because uh, if he does, he's a very emotional guy. And if he's not happy, he generally doesn't play well. He had to leave his family. And he wasn't happy that he got traded to Chicago. He, he's one of the nicest guys ever, and he just came. And it looks like it's really affecting, might be part of why Chicago's having a problem here. Uh, he hasn't looked all that great. His obviously his numbers have been terrible, but the defense has been awful. And the biggest awful on that defense has been Seth Jones, which I know you guys all heard it in Chicago. Seth Jones is poor defensively in Columbus while well, he was, and so now you're seeing it. So he's got great offense, but... Uh, in fact, I would say that he's actually played worse than I saw him. I'm sure Chicago is going to work on his confidence, and hopefully he becomes better in the defensive end because he doesn't have to be great. He's a good offensive guy, but he's got to be a lot better than he was. It's been an absolute disaster. No, he's not the only one because Eric Gustafson is there, and I know Eric Gustafson is playing poor defensively because he's Eric Gustafson, and that's what he does. So... The defense has got to play better. Lankinen has played well when he's in. He's going to be in tonight against, uh, who the heck was it? I forget. <laughs> he's going to be in tonight anyways. Jeez, I forget. Um, but overall, I thank God they're putting Kirby Doc on the first line. Taze has just not got going, but you know he will. I think Chicago will come back. It's just, you got Taze hasn't played, Kirby Doc hasn't played. You know, it's going to take a bit for them to get their legs and this team to get going. I'm still believing Chicago. I still think they're going to 
do well this year. It's just going to take a little bit. Alexander Nylander, man, oh, man, is his career over? Has he done anything in the minors? Have they actually played some games down there yet? Oh, he's got two goals in two games. Good, that's a good sign. They, they really need him to step it up because they could use him in the lineup right now. I was surprised that Ian Mitchell didn't make the lineup. He's in – oh, he's only played one, what, five games? He's played five games for the Ice Dogs? Okay. Uh, I surprised he didn't make it this year. Tell me which why, why, why you figured he didn't make it because they could use him instead of Eric Gustafson, I would say. All right, let's get to the next team. Colorado, and we it's not much you can say about Colorado yet. McKinnon hasn't been there. Landeskog is just going to be getting in the lineup against Florida tonight. Uh, yeah, they haven't won, uh, but their lineup has been completely depleted. You take off anybody's number one and number one winger and center, and it's going to be trouble. The, the thing I've had a problem with, and everybody is kind of like holding their breath right now, is Darcy Kemper. Hasn't looked great. And it's kind of scary. I think a lot of what, I don't know, what goes in your mind, what kind of goes in my mind, is Arizona used to just collapse around Kemper and block shots like crazy and everything like that. You know, is it, was that a product of his work there in Arizona? Was that a product of why he looked so good? I don't think so. I think he's going to be great. Um but having, especially with this defense, it just, wait till everybody's back, take a deep breath, and uh, I'm pretty sure this team will be back rolling again. I can't see them not. I just can't. It's impossible not to. Not, not even going to think about it. Alex Newhook was sent to the minors. That surprised me. Uh, Ra uh, Ra Sample Ranta took his spot, I believe, is who beat him out. I'd like to see Maltzab up here. I, in New Jersey, I kept on wondering why they weren't giving him more of a chance up there. And with uh, New, Valerie Nachuskin being injured, he now gets a chance to get some beef up on the top with uh, Kadri and Burakovsky. And I'm going to be really interested to see how he does. Uh, I'll be watching that game for sure. How's Newhook doing? Have they played enough games yet? Oh, it's only one game. Scored a goal in one game, though. I was really surprised he went down. Uh, prospects, not much going in the way of prospects for Chicago. That was the other thing I was thinking is, did they just bring in Flurry kind of to appease Taves and make it look like they're winning? Because it looks like what they've been doing is trying to let their veterans think that they're trying to win now when they're really not and they're actually rebuilding. But all these young players can feed off guys like Taves and that, and they are trying to not – for tasing them not to threaten to leave. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it feels like to me. Uh, Columbus, this is a mishmash of a lineup. Uh, against Detroit, they couldn't get anything going. Uh, it, it's going to take a couple. It's going to take probably 10 games before you can really see what this team is, and it's probably going to be too late by then. Uh this fun line of Tessier, Cole Sillinger, and Shinnikoff, what are they, all under 22 years old? Fun line to watch, but not a, you know, it doesn't, it's not a line that you want to be putting up against people on a regular basis for sure. It's just too young. Um, number one center is Boone Jenner. Like it's, it, I, I said before, I said, I think they could surprise. And that's simply because you had a new coach and all that. But the more I, uh, watching them, I, I don't think there's going to be much of a surprise here. Merzlikens is going to stop a lot of rubber, and they're going to lose a lot of games. Jake Bean has looked really, really good. He has really taken this opportunity to be uh, – he's really taken this opportunity to get minutes and uh, running with it. He's playing very, very well. Adam Boquist, on the other hand, who I said I thought was a fantastic pickup for Jones, has not been playing all that great from what I've seen. He's been fairly non, like, unnoticeable, which I, I find kind of odd. Um, Max Stomi getting injured, of course. That's 
really unfortunate. He was looking really good. He was looking the best I've seen him since he was in Arizona. And now, boom, he gets an injury. And what was it? Upper body out for three weeks. Too bad. And a lot of injured guys. Ben Strom. So it's going to be a rough go for Columbus. But it'll. It, at the very least, you're going to be able to say that you have a general manager there that can probably build this into a contender. I do think that they'll sign Lion Aether. I think Lion is going to be really happy with uh, Lindsay there. I do. Okay. Uh, Dallas. They've looked old, man. They looked old so far on the lineup, and they're starting to get the injuries that I was worried about. John Klingberg. Uh, Jason Robertson, of course, is young, and apparently he's day by day. He'll be a lot better when he comes back. But what what, what I've watched of them, they're, they're working hard, but they just seem a little bit behind. And a lot of the reason why they seem a little bit behind are guys like Jamie Benn and Radulov, whose legs are starting to fall off. And that's why. So my that was my concern going in, and it's still a concern as we go here. Um, all, you always have Hockenpah, though. You have Yanni Hockenpah. So that's good. Got to love yourself some Hockenpah. I was surprised Ty Delandria didn't make it. And they haven't played enough in the minors to find out how he's doing down there. But uh, I thought he was going to make it this year for sure. Next, uh, Detroit. And uh, from what I've watched, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, I've been saying this for a long time. I don't understand why people thought that Tyler Bertuzzi was only going to be a second-line winger. I know it's only three games, but were other people not seeing the shot that that guy had up until now? He's got an incredible shot. And now we're playing him on the top line. He comes back from injury, and he's just throwing everything. Uh, that game against Columbus, uh, which they won, was a really solid game. Uh, now, Columbus isn't the best uh, op best opposition, but I, I just feel like this lineup is starting to, sh to come together. Zadina with that with the slap shot. Who was I can't remember who they were playing. But his slap, that slapper off the off wing is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and Lucas Raymond making the lineup and looking like he belongs already is so huge for this organization, for this team. Um, they're, they're so close. I think they're probably going to miss the playoffs this year, but one more year. And now I get why they picked up Nick Letty. I still think they paid too much, but... Stevie Y is Stevie Y. Maureen Sider obviously needed some work on the offensive side of his game, and Nick Letty will help him out a lot on that. He's got three assists already, but I have him for rookie of the year, and it looks like he's going to be it. Uh, that guy's just a beast. The defense still needs some work, and it's going to take a little bit for that to be the case. Maybe only another year, though, because we got uh, Simone Evanson is knocking it out of the park in Sweden already this year. Seven points in 12 games in Sweden for uh, a kid, a rookie like that is pretty darn good. And uh, William Bollander, he's always going to be a defensive guy mostly, but he's a big, solid guy that could be ready in another two years. Um, but Edmondson is going to come along and change this lineup really quick, I think. So a lot of good things to look Oh, Joseph Bellino's got two goals already. He's going to – I don't think he's going to stay in the AHL all year. And you'll have him back up in the lineup. It's, uh, it's starting to round out. Starting to round out. I – was, okay, Nedeljkovic's numbers. I'm not going to say it is going to be, but I kind of said it was going to be. I thought it was going to be. I don't think Nedeljkovic is going to do well in Detroit. I don't think so far I'm correct. It's only one game played. I mean, come on. But I don't think so. I think Thomas Grice is going to end up being the number one in Detroit this year. Next. Oops. What am I doing here? Yeah, Edmonton Oilers. Uh, 
She is absolutely abysmal. Abysmal. Nurse and Barry, never again, Tippett. Never again to put those guys back together again. Barry has been an absolute basket case in the defensive zone this year. And he hasn't put up points either. Yeah, he can play better for sure. He probably will play better. But this Darnell Nurse Barry experiment, Darnell Nurse is not the greatest defensive player. I mean, I love him as a player. He's very aggressive, but defensively he takes a lot of risk and he shouldn't be with Barry. It's Bouchard and Nurse. Bouchard is, I think, the best defenseman they have already. Already. It's Bouchard and Nurse. It's got to be. Uh, Keith and CeCe, okay, whatever. Like, this defense is horrible. It's horrible. Now, that's the bad news. I, I, I just, that's the bad news. Uh, put Barry down here, I would say, with Slater Cuckoo. Play him 12 minutes a night. Put him on the power play to give everybody a rest. Really, that's how high, low I am of on Barry. Three years we got him for, too. <laughs> Anyways, the offense, the second line has looked good and sometimes and not so good other times. Uh, against Anaheim, they really could have been a lot better. Yamamoto ended up getting demoted down to the third line. Um, I, I think they have, I think it would be best to maybe change things up a little bit and put Hyman up here and dry settle down here with Hopkins on the left and put that back together again. I think it's time They they need, uh, I, I know he's trying to make, I think probably what Tippett has done is he promised McDavid that when they got a second line, they would put dry settle on his left because they love playing with each other. But honestly, they haven't really played, uh, spectacular. I know you say eight points in three games is not spectacular. Uh, not really. It's weird. It, it's, they, they're always going to put up points no matter what they do. But honestly, I just haven't thought of it as that great. Maybe it's because the second line, when it's going well, but it didn't look well in Anaheim. So give it some more time. Just give it some more time, I suppose. Warren Fogle, that's what I said. He's probably not going to put up huge points in the NHL. Um, I would, right now, would we want? Would I want Bear back? Absolutely. Would I take Bear over Cody? Cody Cece? No doubt about it. Um, he's doing well in Carolina, and he would have did well here, I would think. Yeah, you know what they what people saw last year with with uh, Bear is he coughed up the puck from time to time because of confidence. But his overall game, he played well. He played well. Yes, you cough up the puck. You, you and the same people. I, I talked to people. Not but the same people who said that they glad Bear is gone were happy that Barry got his three years, and well, that's what you get. A defense that is absolutely disgusting. They should never have even come close to losing that against Anaheim. Are they still gonna do well? Yeah. I mean they're th they're they're three and all. But is that defense gonna bite them in the playoffs? Probably. I would think so for sure. Of course, Smith is injured, hopefully hopefully, for a very short time because we don't want to roll with Koskin in forever. Uh, but he looked pretty good in his time that he was in there. Just that defense needs some work, for sure. And we don't have much in the minors to bring up. Xavier Borjodo in uh, Borgo in uh, QMHL, 12 points in seven games. Six goals and six assists in seven games already. Looked good in the preseason, which doesn't really mean all that much, but now he's playing real hockey and he's crushing it. That means a lot. Carter Savoy, also in college. He had a pretty good year last year. He's got 11 points in four games this year. Kid has got freaking hands. He's got mitts. Small little guy, but he's got killer mitts. Next, Florida. Crushing it, and uh, they're going to continue to do so. There's not really much to say about this. Is only thing I will say is that I really would like Reinhardt to be playing in the middle and Sam Bennett on the wing. I'll keep on saying that over and over again, but it probably won't happen because Bennett's got three goals in three games. But that was one of that was a hat trick. 
Um, however, I really like him there. Anton Lundell has looked so good, and he's going to just get so much better. This team is so deep. A really good 20 to 25 goal scorer like Frank Vetrano can't find a spot other than the fourth line. That's how deep this lineup is. Um, it's fantastic lineup. I, I just love it. Uyghur is still, I believe, the best defenseman on the team. Aaron Ekblad, close. Derek, pretty close. But there was some questions about uh, Brandon Montour, and he has been okay. He's been good enough, though. Kevin Connaughton is there. Who Who's injured? Oh, they had Nudavar. Oh, Nudavar is injured, um, which, I don't know. I think Connaughton might even be better. Joe Thornton is scratched now. He's not going to play every game at 40, 40, whatever, 40 or two years old, years old. Anyways, love this lineup. They still got lots of prospects coming. Going to win the division, I called it. That's what I believe, or I, it's what I predicted. I still believe it. L.A., my surprise pick this year has been, eh. one thing I did say is that Dan o, with Dan O there, Kopitar was going to probably crush it. And so far, so good. Eight points in three games played. Got to love that. Um, it's such a green team. I have a tendency to overvalue young players, and I may have done that here. What is going on with Velarde, man? I don't know. He's starting to trend towards a third, maybe fourth line center, and I just I thought he was going to be way better than that. Also, I'll say it again. I've said it a million times before. I like him better on the wing. I'll bet you he ends up on the wing. And starts playing really well. I'll bet you. That's my that's a prediction. Uh, Drew Doughty, seven points in three games. Woo! Fantastic. Overall, I they 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 played okay, but they also played quick against who was that against? Tell me, help me in the comment section who that was against. And I don't know why. Just keep on rolling with Peterson. He's your best goaltender by a long shot. Archer's Cali have a scratched. This was, uh, there was a guy in my live that said that he was going to score, like, be a 40-goal scorer. I like him, but not a 40-goal scorer. Uh, he is only 20 years old. He's going to take his time. Uh, and then uh, I just I just thought this lineup was going to be better than I've seen so far. But it's very early. Not going to panic or anything like that. They've got a lot of young players still. And Fajimo, who I believe has got two goals in the minors already this year, Turcott, um, Jared Dolan Anderson, who I'm surprised didn't make the lineup, but you know, they've got a lot of depth, so things will be okay in LA, I'm sure of it. Uh, Minnesota, oh, I just love watching this team. I completely forgot, I completely forgot how sublime these guys are in the offensive zone. Unbelievable offensive play, uh, offensive play. I think the best in the league, as the best in the league playing in the offensive zone. They take risks that most coaches won't allow. Dean Evason and Sullivan were my picks to be coach of the year this year. Possibly Quinville, although he should have got it last year. He may not get it this year because the lineup's too strong. Evason has got this team playing like they've been playing ever since they were kids together, man. That's what's amazing about this team. They play like they know where everybody is all the time. I don't know how he does it, how he gets them to do it so fast, but he believes in them for one thing because they make passes that like old school guys, like uh, most coaches would be like, we don't want to be taking those kind of risks, just dump it in the corner or something like that. Not him. He says, go at her, man. I love it. Some of the most exciting hockey I have seen in a long time. I'm rooting for Minnesota because of that. I think it's fantastic. What's Rossi? Rossi in the minors? Have they played enough games to see how he's doing? Oh, Iowa Wild, two games. He's got a goal. He's got one goal. Woo! Good to see. Didn't play much last year. I didn't think he was going to make it because of that. But uh, And Adam Beckham, that's another good high pick that he does. Hasn't played. It's only two games. But uh, I'm taking Minnesota to be second now in the division from what I've watched. I love him. Love him a lot. 
uh, Montreal Canadiens, and uh, it's just a lot of deflation. They haven't won a game in four. Every you know, the general manager comes out and says he doesn't blame the players, and he takes he tries to take it off the players. Maybe he doesn't want them holding their stick too tight and all of that. But it's just a lot of uh, you know deflation after being just about making the Stanley Cup Finals or like winning the Stanley Cup, making it to the finals. And then Weber goes out and uh, Dan O gets traded and Perry leaves and it's just boom, boom, boom after such a high. And then now you're on such a, it, it's, it's a lot of to get yourself back up again and believing this team doesn't believe in itself right now. Um, I never did understand the Mike Hoffman pickup. I, he's, He's got worse and worse every year that he plays. I thought it was a strange pickup, um, and it's not – well, so far he ha- it hasn't worked out. I think he's been injured, so we'll have to see how it works out. Drouin, Dvorak, Anderson, I, I understand that line. Dvorak plays defense. Josh is not the best defensive player, and Jonathan Drouin can uh, – it's got a lot of speed. It's it's an interesting combination, but I would much rather see Toffoli up there. Get get put Toffoli up there, but they have Toffoli with Caulfield and Matthew Perot. I get that lineup too. Matthew Perot, Perot is a good is a is a great passer, but that's two really small guys playing with Toffoli. You know, he's not a guy. It 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 just doesn't seem to work. Uh, Jake Evans on the fourth line. That's what I thought. That's where he belongs. I don't. I'm not a Jake Evans guy. Overall, I just think they lost way too much depth, and they're going to struggle hard. I predicted that they would be, you know, in the bottom of the league this year, and so far it's looking like that's probably going to be the case. Price, I hope you're doing all right out there uh, with whatever it is that you're working on, and. Uh, it's probably not a terrible thing for Montreal to do poorly this year. They got a whole lot of draft picks last year. They've got a bunch of draft picks coming up this next year. Take those picks and then start adding and give her another go. Next, Nashville, finally. This team is going to surprise. And I I wasn't sure how this team was going to look after that crazy run last year where they made the finals. I wasn't sure. I wanted to see it. This was like the big, this is why I'm finishing here, why I'm going to Nashville, because I should stop at Montreal for it to be half. But I love the way this team is playing. Hines is freaking got this, this team playing lit. They believe in each other. They're playing for each other. They have an excitement about the about themselves. Uh, they seem to be playing in the moment and just focusing on shift to shift to shift to shift. That's what you want to do. You hear it all the time. But not every coach can get it in the head of players, especially players like Matt Duchesne, uh, who have had difficulty being that type of guy. But it looks like he's bought in, and that's the word. Every player seems to have bought in him in here. You can look at – I can look at all of these names and say this lineup just doesn't look like it's going to make the playoffs. But when you watch them on the ice, you say this is a playoff team. And Juicy Saros is playing absolutely fantastic. I hope Cody Glass does well down in the minors um, and gets himself back up again. I don't know what's going on with that kid. He looked like he was going to be really good, but just never has been able to put it together. Um, and if it didn't in Vegas and now is in the minors now, I hope he does well for them. But this team, I love them. Anyways, that's my full 42. I got to get to my live show now. Thanks for listening in, and uh, wow, I almost went a full hour of talking. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later. Come on to my live show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. We talk about all this stuff. We do exactly what we did right here, except you guys talk to me at the same time. Okay, bye.